Hi, this is Erin, dictating case 01-2018-14. Autopsy findings. Cause of death, gunshot wounds, manner of death, homicide, identification. The body is out of a 66 inch comma 176 pound Hispanic male who appears consistent with the reported age of 18 years period. The heart is 340 grams period. The epicardium is smooth period. The myocardium is red brown homogenous period. The capsule is smooth and transparent period. The pancreas is normal configuration. This 18 year old male died as a result of gunshot wounds period. The manner of death is homicide and that's the end of this dictation. Thank you. All right. Is it a young person? Yeah. 40. Maybe he has kids or something yeah. that they're... It's definitely something that you have to want to do. I am a medical examiner. On a day-to-day -day basis, our primary job is to perform autopsy examinations. So a treating clinician is trying to do everything they can to prevent death. And in our case, that inevitability has already happened. I am still that patient's doctor. I am their last doctor. I'm the last person that will lay hands on them. Yeah, let's, let's double check on that. And Jenny, do your best to get urine, even if it's just a I do remember a couple of points in my life where I think I knew that I was gonna be, I guess, a weirdo, for lack of a better term. Our bodies have so many different mechanisms to keep us alive. And I always thought it was interesting that something goes wrong, something happens to just crash the system. I think that my morbid sense of humor definitely helps. I think it's something that is halfway required in this job. But I just know that I go home and I've done my job I can't take it home with me or else I'll get burnt out and I won't get to do this anymore. <clears throat> Medical examiner's office, can I help you? The phones uh, generally are, are quite busy during the day. I've been working in the medical field for the past 25 years. I started off in ob -GYN with life coming into this world and it was kind of fitting that this last job opportunity was the opposite end of the spectrum. So May 18th it was a Friday. For me, it started off just like any other day. We went to the back, got the new log book. Within 15 minutes of arriving at work, we were informed that there had been a school shooting at Santa Fe High School. My first thought was, oh, some kid is shooting off their new hunting rifle in the parking lot, something. Maybe this is a prank. No big deal, and I'll never forget it. Uh, our investigator came in, in through the door, and all he said was eight. According to our NBC affiliate, eight people have been Allie, killed. Ali, we are now hearing that nine people we are dead. A moment of silence for 10 lives lost. I would say around 10.30, people started calling, looking for their children. We arrived at the scene. There are SWAT vans. A lot of law enforcement vehicles. Fire trucks. Multiple news helicopters. At a high school. That's not where they belong. I walk into the school. There were chairs knocked over backwards. Kids had run out of their shoes. Only one victim had been moved slightly, but Aside from that victim, everyone else was in the position that they died in. But it wasn't until we walked into the second classroom where a boombox was playing softly, and I don't remember the song, but I do remember it was Credence Clearwater Revival. 
which is a band I really like. You have to think, what does a parent go through to even consider calling a medical examiner's office to see if their child is there? And then, of course, you tell them, like, if there's anything else you can think of, you know, we're here for you, please call us back. And then they would call back just with the smallest detail because that's all they had to hold on to. Every person that called that could not find their loved one. Their child was dead. I had to remind myself that this was my job. This is what I had trained for to keep, at least for then, the rest of it separate. And I promised myself that I would not, while I was there, think about my own kids or think about the parents of the kids that were dead. And I did it. Probably a family member of a victim would wonder, I wonder what the injuries were. You know, I wonder if they suffered or, you know, where they were in the school, for example. So those are all things that I actually know. I'm not sure that it brings any comfort. All right, so it sounds like we don't have any surprises. You do just sort of get tunnel vision and you focus on your job and 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 you do your job and it's almost worse when the work is over and you say, ah, oh, you know, now I'm left with this other stuff. This event will most certainly have a lasting impact on me professionally and personally. I think professionally I can make some good of it. Personally, it's more cynicism, it's more pessimism, more fear. But at the end of the day, I have my kids, and a lot of people don't. So who am I to feel sorry for myself? I wake up in the morning thinking about it because I still have nightmares, which is something new for me. Why are these people so special? These kids were in art class, supposed to be making pretty things, and somebody burst in with a shotgun. I think that's what makes it different. I don't get to grieve because those weren't my kids. I feel like the world is moving on and forgetting about what happened already. I feel like I have had a brain transplant with somebody who has really strong emotions and that I am out of control and I don't know how to live or regulate the sadness, the anger, the anxiety that has come from this. It was hard for me to come home and discuss it with my family. I did for several days, but I felt like I was making my kids cry because I came home and would cry about it. So I've got to somehow, you know, hold this in and kind of keep it together. When the school shooting in Parkland had happened, I had sat down and talked to my high school daughter, and I told her, just hide, baby, hide, and I'll try to get to you. But after this school shooting, I told her, I said, don't hide, run for your life. And you know how hard it is to tell your kid to run for their life. Your job as a parent is to protect your children. And you wanna do that at all costs.
Hi, Mom. Cheers. Yay. Happy Thursday. I was talking about today how I was afraid that people were forgetting and like moving on. They won't. Are you sure? Awesome. My best friend's mom is a uh, principal and uh, she reached out to me right after Santa Fe and said that she was thinking of me and that made me feel guilty because I was like, you need to, I, you should be thinking of the parents. Don't think of me. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. You were a part to be considered. The first thing I read about it, about Santa Fe, was um, that there was a, a student who ran from one classroom to the other through the closet, and he said there were two students in that closet, and he tried to get them to run with him, and they didn't. And I got those two kids that didn't run. So after that, it was a media blackout for me in my house. And now this um, Maryland thing is happening. I'm trying not to be upset about it because I'm still at work. And I don't know if they've read it. I'm not going to tip them off that it's happening. No, it's just me. Yeah. We'll print them when the re whole report comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. The staff writers were hiding under their desks. Yeah, I think I'll stop reading. Let's Google something different like puppies. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.